G'day my fellow media collectors, I'm Troy and today I have a very special episode for you where I sit down with my good mate Del at Del on Movies and we have a chat about all things physical media collecting and superhero cinema. From the state of the physical media industry today to fixing the MCU and thoughts on the new DCU and pretty much all things in between. It's a great chat and I had a blast catching up with my good friend. So sit back and enjoy. Rightio, Del, thanks for joining us on the show, mate. Um, this has been something that I've been wanting to do for ages. Uh, and uh, we finally made it happen <laughs> after a while. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, that's a big part of me. I've been wanting to make this happen for almost 12 months. But as as uh, as we all know, life gets in the way <laughs> sometimes yeah, for sure. to organize these things. So, uh, yeah. So um, I'm pumped to have you on. Great to, because uh, I was on your show a few months back. Got right. to be on uh, uh, your movie swap, which was heaps of fun got to uh watch purple rain which i'd never watched before <laughs> and that was a, an experience it definitely <laughs> was <like> yes <laughs> same for me watching bill and ted's excellent adventure for the first time it was definitely an experience yeah <laughs> that's it that's it um so yeah um i've been keen to have you on because i just want to talk superhero movies now now that you're on my channel let's talk let's talk superhero stuff that's, let's do um, it I, I even redecorated back here just for the occasion yeah, I seen your video. You did a video not long ago where you re reshuffled everything around and um, sorted it all out. How are you for space? Are you, are you struggling for space or? Yes, I, I'm. I'm struggling for, for space. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, a move is in the works, so I'll oh. maybe have a little more space. We'll we'll see how that works out. Your own man cave, maybe or maybe doubtful, but maybe you never know. No. Nah. So I'm lucky I got shifted into the shed so I could make this. Like if I was inside, I'd be like you with just like a couple of little shelves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean they're they're pretty nice size shelves, but they're just a couple. And it's 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 uh I'm I'm quickly outgrowing them. I already oh, have it, outgrown it, them and just reshuffled it, around. That's the the constant bane of the collector, isn't it? Just not enough room. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you. So um so yeah, so why don't you tell the viewers about your channel and what what you do there? Yeah, my channel is Dell on Movies, like the the name says. And on my channels, I, I talk about movies, all sorts of movies. Um, and I also talk a little bit of collecting, not as much, but you know, when I buy stuff. Uh, but the flagship show of the channel, I guess you would call it, is Movie Swap that Troy was on. Yes, and that's where yes, I have yes. another uh, movie buff on. And we uh, give each other a movie that we've never seen before. And we do a deep dive on those movies. We watch both persons, both people watch those movies and we do a deep dive. But yeah, I give movie recommendations. I do top 10 lists and, and I do talk quite a bit of superheroes, even though, even though it's not exclusively for that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we kind of got to know each other too, is from your love of superhero movies and stuff. That's where we've sort of bonded in the comments, as they say. Yeah. And, um, and that's why I've got Dell on today to, to talk all this type of stuff. So, um, so what, what got you, what was the inspiration for you to, to start your own channel? What, what, what was that final thing that made you go, let's, let's do this. Uh, there were two things really. I, I was, yeah. um, it was around pandemic time. I didn't start my channel during the pandemic time, but at, around that time, you know, you're home all the time. And so I'm yeah. just looking for different things to watch on YouTube. And I was like, you know what? I collect movies. Let's see if anybody out there collects movies. And I, I found uh, quite a bit of people and I was looking, you know, well, let's see who's got the most or what, what's in somebody else's collection. So I started watching a lot of those really long videos where everybody shows off everything in their collection. Yeah. yeah and, yeah, yeah. and then one of those was a, a guy named 4k D Ray. And yeah. I started watching more of his other content besides that video. And then he came up with something called the, uh, the movie battles. Uh, and yeah. he would have a, uh, two collectors come on and basically have a competition you know somebody might say hey pull out the best horror movie in your collection and they would each go get it and then uh the, the audience would vote on it and you know at the end there would be a winner so i got really into those and and uh became friendly with with him with the creator of that content with creator of that channel 4k d ray and he yeah. kind of encouraged me to go into it and then a few other people encouraged me and then finally I was like hey, well, you know what just screw it let's just do it yeah, that's it. That's it. 
I was a bit the same. Like that's where my spark came. The the good old pandemic. You know, you got time to sit around and think about these things, and yeah, and you're kind of like, yeah, I was a bit the same. I was like, well, you know, I got a decent enough collection. Maybe there's some other people out there, and then you start watching videos, and then that little spark of inspiration, and then before you know it, you know, <laughs> you find yeah, yourself on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> here we are, and that I mean, and, and honestly, that's how I found you. I'm not, I've told you this. Uh, I think when you were on my my channel, I told you this. Yeah, uh, you know, I was. I was also noticed that, you know, I have a lot of superhero movies by normal people's standards, not by Troy's standards, <laughs> but I have a lot of, I have a, I have a lot of superhero movies. So I was like, well, you know, let's see who's got, who, who has, does, who has more than me? What, what's out there? And yeah. And yeah. then of course, doing those searches, I came across your channel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, and it's funny. It's a lot of people who do, do discover my channel is through those videos and like I do them every year and everyone is keen to, to see them. Uh, they're always a, a fair bit of work, especially considering the collection just keeps growing and growing and growing. But now, it, you know, it's worth it in the end. Everyone loves watching them. So, um, look, I'm I'm gonna let you in a little beside behind the scenes on my channel. I don't know how you do it because I've yeah. I, I'm still trying to get this video out where I show all of my superhero movies out. And oh, right, one yeah. I did it one way, and well, I started doing it one way, and then the, the sound just wouldn't sync up for whatever reason. I don't know. Another time I was doing, it, I was trying to like place it down and show it the way uh, Roberto Nero does it, and yep. I kept getting my hands in the way and couldn't edit it out. So I, so now I'm going to do it again. Spider Man gloves like he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm still going to do it. It's just a matter of of me just sitting down carving out an hour or so out of, uh, out of my time and just going, okay, here's this one and here's that one and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I, I have to admit, I struggled with how, like when the first time someone requested the video and said, Hey, do that. And I was like, okay. So I watched a few for inspiration thinking, okay, how does everyone else do it? And I noticed a lot of people do the whole from the collection. They're like, and this one, and then this one. And, and I was like, okay. But then I, I was like, oh god like camera placement this that like exactly. you start going through the logistics of it all and you're like oh god that's a pain yeah in the I, <laughs> that was another way that i tried i tried it that way and one yeah. see i i don't use my phone like a lot of people do i have a, a webcam so i'm trying to hold this yeah. webcam and it, it's all shaky it looks like you know <laughs> it looks like a found footage film and i'm trying to <laughs> <everything out there. laughs> yeah so that, that's why i went with like the option where i set up uh which I do. I have to admit, I, I use my phone. I, I don't have any flashy camera. I just use my uh, phone. But I just did like a selfie holder over the top of a desk and just, I thought that's the easiest way to sort of, because, you know, you want to, you don't want to be there forever, right. <laughs> especially when you've got as many as I. So you're trying to go through them all. And I found that that's the best way, just sort of talking over it as I go through. But um, yeah, I mean, each their own. Everyone seems to do it differently. I, um, I don't think I've seen too many that are the same everyone seems to try and come up with something different but yeah it stick with it mate because i'd love to see it trust me yeah it, it's it's coming so ho soon hopefully so <laughs> oh, looking forward to it looking forward to it um like, like speaking of because we know you're a big superhero fan but i also know you you're a big horror fan you're a big martial arts fan you've kind of i know on your channel you love showing all different is there any is there one genre above most that you like that's your favorite that's your did you favor one more than the other or you like it? They're all more kids. I can't, I can't pick. <laughs> they're, they're pretty even keel. I think, you know, you know what? It goes in cycles. You know, you ask me yeah. on Monday, it might be one. You ask me on Tuesday, it might be another. Um, but it, I, the main, the main three are the, really the ones you mentioned. It, it would, it would be uh, horror would be, would be one. Um, and then martial arts is another. I'm, I'm actually doing a martial arts marathon this month uh, for, for my channel um yeah. and then superheroes is right there i mean they're all you know neck and neck for me so yeah, it, so, yeah so if I on you tomorrow it'd be different <laughs> yeah it depends on the mood it really does depend on the mood yeah because I, I i have to admit i noticed that in a lot of your videos you know you'll be you're like talking about martial arts and the next one will be about horror and then there'll be a superhero one and then it's you can start to see a bit of a pattern like you, you can see the the your three key your yeah three key interests in that yeah those uh, are my those are my three big ones yeah yeah i remember i was a mad martial arts fan back when i was a teenager i'd like watch all the bruce lee jackie chan uh cynthia rock rock um who else like all those classic late 80s early 70s type sort of martial arts flicks i just couldn't get enough of them back at the time I used right. to go down to the video store and do the whole 
weekly ones as they used to do and go home with all these martial arts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. I, I binged that so much when I was a teenager. I, was, I mean, still love a good martial arts movie, but uh, not as much as, as superheroes now. But, um, but yeah, so uh, as far as, like, uh, your interest in superheroes, was it, like, something you, like, did you read comics as a kid or did you discover comics later or well, how did that come about? The, my first encounter with superheroes was really through TV. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm a seventies kid. And at, at that time, you know, Batman, the Adam West show, Batman was in syndication. So it was on every day when I got home from school. So I watched that. The Linda yeah. Carter wonder woman show was on all the time. I watched that. And then when I got a little bit older, uh, the, the incredible Hulk with Bill Bixby, Lou Ferrigno, ah, that was yes, on, there was even a Spider-Man yeah. show with, uh, um, Nicholas Nick Hammond played yeah. Peter Parker and Spider Man. I watched. I was, so I, I watched all of those shows, the terrible Captain America TV movies. <laughs> I, I watched all of those, and then when I got to be about twelve ish, twelve thirteen, I started getting into comic books, yep. and and that really carried up until I was probably about eighteen, nineteen. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, like for myself, I I remember reading uh like watching like the batman same as you the batman 66 was that that show that was just on all the time like i mean television here in australia is just was slightly different i suppose uh than america like we had like three channels back in the 80s and that was it you know, you, oh yeah, you know, I, yeah i had three yeah. channels i get it yeah yeah uh, like, not not like the nowadays like with, with everything but like yeah you would come across like uh batman and wonder woman and yeah like the hulk i remember that used to be like a prime time show yeah. in the early 80s like um yeah and things like that like and it was I'm, I'm, I'm a bit the same as you like that got me later on into comics where i think it was for myself like um when i was about 15 i watched uh 15 16 i watched the punisher movie with Dolph lundgren because mm -hmm. i was a mad action hero fan and I'm um, like, oh, this is a comic book. And then that was it. Boom. I was hooked. I read my first Punisher comic. And then I was collecting comics for years right, after right. that. I was just like dragged in. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I was done. But um, so what, did you have any sort of like, what was your, did you have your favorite book or hero or what was it? Was it anything like that? Or did you like maybe favorite, like you're like more Marvel or DC? What, what was your, I, what, I was your what was your go to? As far as comic books, I definitely favored Marvel. Um, yep. e even like if you act, like if you just ask me who's my favorite superhero, you know it's Batman. Yep. But I didn't read much Batman. I, I read, uh, and my my other favorite would be Spider Man. I read a lot of Spider Man comics, you know. And back when I was collecting, there were like five different Spider Man books. There was the Amazing Spider Man, oh. the Spectacular Spider. -Man. You know, there were yep. two or three other ones that I and I, I read those, and I read a lot of the X Men. And I read some Avengers and I, I read a little bit of a lot of other characters, but mainly I, I was making sure that every month I had the latest Spider-Man issue and the latest X-Men issue. Those were my, my definite two that I had to have. Everything else was kind of like, okay, maybe I'll, if it looks interesting, I'll grab it. And, yeah. and well, there was that one stretch for about a year where I was, where the Hulk was really great. And yeah. I, I, I read that for a, a solid year, but yeah kind of dibbled and dabbled as far as dc goes I, I didn't read much you know it was the occasional batman comic yeah. uh, the occasional superman comic you know every once in a while i might read the flash or or um or a justice league and i i think at least at that time you know the the characters for dc they all seemed uh too big for me okay yeah yeah and, and i mean like you know, just not relatable whereas spider-man you know he was a much more relatable character he you know his teenager he and the whole, the whole metaphor for puberty and then even as that after he's an adult you know he, he's kind of struggling to make ends meet and hold a relationship together and so he's a relatable character and the yep. x-men you had all these different guys who were being persecuted for whatever reasons and you know they again more relatable to me so that I, that's why i gravitated towards marvel comics rather than dc and i think yeah that i mean that that makes us a lot of sense when you think about the lot of the dc characters they're almost godlike right they're, they're not relatable in that sense like you look at superman wonder woman flash like 
they're, they're all almost godlike where even though we still have Marvel had those sort of superpowers, like you said, they had a lot more of these grounded backstories of like, like you said, Peter Parker, he was just a struggling kid, you know, that lived in New York and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this one, like, like uh, that grounded story in the background that you as a reader could relate to, as opposed to, you can't relate to being an alien from another planet. Right. <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> yeah. right. I totally, I totally get that. And I say, and, and I think that's where, like for myself, uh, two of my favorite uh, comic book characters were Punisher and Batman. Mm -hmm. Like you could actually go, I could be one of them. Not that I'd go out and shoot people right, right. like Punisher, but you could relate to that. Like he's this man who had this tragedy. He takes on, the, the underworld blah 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 and he's batman who lost his parents and so he mm. decided to you know he didn't and, jump and in they a don't have radioactive goo or yeah got a ring or this like it was right. like these characters just seem so much more real and relatable you kind of like oh i could i could be them you know what i mean yeah oh, oh, well, <laughs> oh no no it makes perfect sense but they're, they're they're not super powered beings you know they're they're actual human beings and yeah you know, especially in the case of the Punisher, because he doesn't, he's he's not got this crazy costume that would look really out of place yeah, in the real exactly. world. Whereas Batman, yeah. you know, yes, he's a human being, but even he's still got the costume. So, you, you know, you're not, you're really going to do that. But hey, I can throw yeah. on a shirt with a skull on it anytime and just walk around. And, yeah, yeah, you know, right. if, and if I'm going through something like what he went through, then yeah, I could see myself, you know, okay, I'm, I'm just going to take some people out here. Yeah, that's that's it. That's it. It's yeah, just that that relatable side of those characters. It's, I don't know. It's something about that that draws you to them, I suppose. Um, but um, so we talked about um, so for you, the shows were your Batman. Your, your was there any sort of movies that you, you really drew like with those early Supermans or Batman? Oh yeah. That, oh, absolutely. That, yeah. Um, Super, Superman the movie, I mean, when it came out, uh, it was one of those things, you know, it's not like now, obviously, nobody knew superhero movie could succeed, you know, they weren't sure, they really so hadn't true. been on yeah. the big screen in a major way uh, yeah. since Batman 66, maybe, if you want to count that as major, and that was really like a pilot to the TV show. So Yeah, kind of, yeah, it's hard to say that, I mean, that was technically i think that was in cinemas that, that yeah it did go in cinemas. cinemas it yeah, did go in yeah, theaters yeah and but I, I wouldn't say that that was a it was a major release or anything like that so superman and i suppose was, that kind of that rode on the success of the tv show more than um here's this movie go watch right. it it was more people went to that movie because they knew of the tv show so i think i think that's the thing about superman is that it didn't have a tv show or anything for it to become this huge success it became a success on its right. own at the cinema yeah the the tv show that there was the george reeves show i mean that was 25 years earlier at best so so yeah that was 54 it, or five, something like six, that something yeah like that. yeah yeah so, that's, a, that, that's a big stretch <laughs> so, yeah so nobody was expecting george reeves to show up on the screen like you know yeah they might have been with uh with with batman even though adam west was really old but he was still like campaigning for the role but he was we, he was campaigning for when michael keaton got it if i remember rightly yeah he was, yeah he, was yeah, exactly. he didn't get it like dude come on <laughs> <laughs> but yeah when superman the movie came out I, I remember going to see that clearly in the theater and um it was one of those weird things because you know back then movies used to stay in the theaters a lot longer Yes, and I so did, I don't yeah. know for sure that I saw it like opening week or anything like that. I just know yeah. I saw it, and but when I went, there were less than ten people in the theater when I saw it. So I'm I'm guessing it was a little later on in its run, yeah. but it was still it it was still a magical movie when you looked up there and and special effects are kind of dodgy now when you look at the movie in some spots, but back yeah. then, you know, we had never seen anything like that. So seeing uh, Christopher Reeves flying and it you know reasonably look like flying again if you compare it to the george reeves show where it didn't <laughs> so yeah. it, was, it was a it was a pretty magical moment so that one is one that got me really into it and it wasn't really a you know then the other superman movie superman 2 was also a big one for me as a kid and i went yep. and saw that one in three i didn't go see four but 
uh, until Batman 89, you know, there really wasn't another superhero movie like that. Any superhero movies were like either made up just for the movie and were, you know, small characters like John Ritter had a superhero movie at some point. Uh, yeah. And, um, I can't uh, hero something or other. Yeah. yeah and, or it was characters who were so obscure that nobody really knew about them except for hardcore fans, you know, things like the Phantom came out and, yeah, and you, you, you did you notice that? Like I, I did too. Like there was that real run of nineties. Say, like, yeah, I, I would say more nineties to before we sort of got to our Spider Mans and stuff, where they would pick properties that were lesser known ones that they could almost kind of go, well, it's an action movie, or it's a sci fi mm-hmm. movie, yeah. or it's a this movie. Like it was always those extremes where. So it wasn't like, look, it's a comic book movie because they were afraid. I think they were afraid that people would be like, eh, comic book movie, that's a bit hokey. I don't want to watch it. Yeah. Where they I can mean... palm it off. You look at, so like you said, Phantom, for instance, uh, Tank Girl was one. Um, the Shadow. Blade, Shadow. Yeah. When you start looking at some of Rocketeer, they're not those top tier characters. They, they're on that those borderline ones where you could kind of just go, well, this is a bit more of a period piece, or this one's a bit more like you know what I mean. It always felt like they were trying to sell it as something else, as opposed to being a comic book movie. And at that time, I remember being so into it. It's like you would just, oh, it's a comic book movie, <laughs> you know? yeah. And even yeah. though it's not like your Batman, Superman's, or whatever else, it was all like you just could only get what you could get, I suppose. But yeah, they they had that real weird. They didn't want to let anyone know it was a comic book movie. They, I think they were just afraid. It yeah. Felt, I felt like they were afraid to let the, the audience I mean, know. I mean, I mean, think about it. If we go back to Superman, the first the Superman, the movie, the first one, you know, it was a yeah. huge success. Superman 2 was a huge success. But then yeah. 3 really wasn't, and 4 was definitely was not. And then yeah, the Batman movie it, started yeah. in 89. And then between that, with all these lower-tier characters – getting movies you know none of them really yeah. did well as far as the box office is concerned so yeah, yeah. everybody's like yeah superhero movies i don't do well and yeah and yeah just and didn't give it. and that's like chance. i mean is that, that that old joke that batman and robin killed the superhero franchise there for a while um and and i mean, and I mean it kind of did it it just got to that ridiculous stage i suppose that it they like would like the superhero uh, the superman movies are the same it's kind of like big success the second one's just as good as the f- and then it was kind of like well, where do we go from here and then they right. seem to fumble the ball on the third and then they just go ape shit crazy on the four <laughs> like it's almost <laughs> like the same arc it for was both, yeah both yeah. ones like when you look at it it's like yeah it, it, you kind of think to yourself like did they have that drawn up in an office somewhere it's like it seems okay, like it, right? the fourth one now this is where we write the series off <laughs> It seems like it because if I mean if you watch I mean I'm sure you I know you've seen it but you know when you ever you go back to watch Superman for Quest for Peace oh my God that movie is just so insane it's like how did they how did this even make it to the screen I, exactly it makes you wonder um I just uh, I just recently got all the Superman movies on 4K uh, mm-hmm. just recently so on uh, next month or the month after. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna review all the Superman movies on 4K to see what they look like. So, bad special effects and all. Uh, even uh, was he Raggedy Radioactive Man? Was that was that him? Um, in the fourth one was it Radioactive? Uh, man? Uh, new, I think it was Nuclear Man. Nuclear Man with yeah. his claws. Uh... Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that Did it make you Ooh. sick. Oh God, that was. Oh. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to watch that one. <laughs> It is a, oh, a drink heavily. Just that might yeah. get you through it. <laughs> drink up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, maybe maybe a nice couple of drinks before <laughs> just yeah. to try and forget it. Um, yeah, God. I, but, but in saying that too, I am kind of looking forward to it because I do. I remember watching them as a kid, like, and I even and I think back of like the the um, the third one with Richard Pryor in it, like. What, that, like that whole concept of that movie is just that's not a superman movie <laughs> that's no like, it's it's not it's not you know now, I'll, I'll admit to having a soft spot for that movie and it's largely because of the this superman versus superman fight in the in the junkyard yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. I, I will give it i will give it that much that and then they took that whole plot of you don't know if you've ever seen the comedy uh office space 
Uh, oh, years ago, years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they took that plot and they actually mentioned that it was from Superman 3. You know, the whole <laughs> penny, parts of pennies and all that kind of deal. Yeah, that's right. The, the part of penny, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, I just right. like, that's, that's, that's another movie. That's not a super villain movie. Like, and that, <laughs> that was the funny thing is they always seem to steer away from like, you have these great, great villains. Like Superman had some great villains, like your Brainiacs and, um, oh, Maletto and who else? Oh, like he, he's got a really good rogues gallery, just as good as anyone does. And yet no one wanted to touch any of them. Like it was like, hey, let's have Richard Pryor. <laughs> let's right. have Nuclear Man. Like it just seemed like, geez, come on. Like you've got all these great villains you could have and you've, 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 you've got some um, Superman fighting Richard Pryor who's doing like fraud on the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And you know, you, you know what though? It, it's, it was a time when comic book people weren't really involved in making these movies. Yeah, true. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, like, the uh, I can't ever remember their name, the Salkins or whatever their names are. They had control of Superman. They're yeah. not really comic book people. They were just trying to make money off Superman. Yeah. And, you know, I then they like Richard Pryor was quite the name back then, too. So he was a draw. Right. Yeah. Right. Richard Pryor is a big name. And, yeah. uh, you know, same thing. This is how all those other smaller characters, because nobody, they didn't really care. It was like, hey, you know what? Let's just make a superhero movie and we'll make it either a slapstick comedy to go with it or just a straightforward action flick. And yep. and they're not really comic book people getting involved really in making these movies, probably until Blade or maybe yeah. maybe the Batman movies, maybe. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, watching uh, just recently doing those Batman movies, you see a lot of the behind the scenes where, you know, a lot of people are involved. That yeah. Yeah. know their comic book history and stuff like that um but you're right the 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 movie execs get their fingers in there and going oh no but this will be more marketable and this will be this and that'll be that and but, yeah you know that makes the story bell oh we don't care about the story we just want to make money <laughs> yeah exactly exactly we just want to make money yeah yeah that's it that's it um uh, just looking through here um so as far as col your collection goes, how how long do you think you've been collecting for? Did, were you one of those people that when DVD hit, you were there first one buying DVD or did you kind of wait or? No. Um, you know, I, I always had a few on hand here and there. Yeah. You know, and, and especially since, you know, I, I had kids. So, you know, we had, you know, stack of Disney stuff. And then I had a few movies oh. here and there. I've got a cupboard in there full of Barbie movies, so I'm hearing you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. We had so we had a lot of Barbie movies. We had a lot of Olsen twins movies, and you know, oh, Sco oh. what about what about your girls? Uh, Scooby Doo. My girls would love Scooby Doo, so we got heaps of Scooby Doo movies. And yeah, they they like Scooby Doo, but the Olsen twins were there. That was their thing. That was their go to. Yeah, yeah, that was their yeah, go to. For, for us, it was Barbie, uh, Scooby Doo uh i'm just trying to think dora the explorer that was yeah, oh yeah one. oh man <laughs> so many hours watching dora the explorer with them and yeah. It, man yeah it, you know I, I just got to know just about every episode and then with my son and even my girls a little later with spongebob we watched so much spongebob oh god yeah, yeah. Okay. and then i i didn't really get into actually making it a collection until probably about oh five or so yep. and 2005 and that was um at blockbuster uh and i you know it was like it was a second job i needed a second job at the time and so i got one there yeah and then they had uh well two things happened you had employees got to rent five movies a week free okay because oh, they wanted yeah. you to yeah they wanted you to watch movies so you'd be able to engage with the customers so they'll say oh, hey course, yeah, every sense. week you take yeah. five movies home you watch them and then you can come back, recommend them, don't recommend whatever it is. I don't care what you do, but you can you can talk to the customers about movies. Yeah. So that was the first thing that happened. Then on the other side of that, they you, of course you got employee discount on top of what they were already doing for everybody else, which is they were selling used DVDs, and yeah. depending on the quality or the titles, it could be three for twenty bucks or three four for twenty bucks. Yeah. So that was where my collection started. It was like, oh, okay. I I can get these movies really cheap, and with the employee yep. discount, I, I was getting them really like four for fifteen bucks or something, <laughs> something like that. Which I suppose wasn't too bad back then, yeah. yeah. No, not at all. So that's where the collection started. Oh uh, right, yeah, yeah. It's always that. I suppose like would would that would you say that really sparked like working there 
watching these movies all the time is that you reckon that would be the point where it's just like wow did that that real inspiration to be that like start collecting it and whatever else like you just almost not forced but you're just like oh, i can imagine that would be that real real spark there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and it, yeah. and I, I have a um i have a collective spirit by nature so <laughs> so it was it wasn't much of a push um oh, i believe my wife calls it <laughs> <laughs> so, since when i was a kid i mean i started before comic books i was collecting baseball cards oh, and yeah, i had yeah. you know boxes full of baseball cards and then it went to comic books i had a few hundred of those and after that the next thing i was collecting was music i was collecting cds i had hundreds of those and yeah. and then so it was really the natural evolution what's the next step oh here's these movies i've always loved movies and yeah. i'm getting them cheap sign me up and, <laughs> that's you know, it yeah before you know it I, you know i started with a few i had about 20 and then then a couple it, blinks later i had two or three hundred then a couple blinks later i had a thousand and <laughs> here we go <laughs> So how, how big do you think your collection is now? Have you have you counted it or? Yeah, I, I have because I kind of keep track of what I have, so I don't double buy things. Oh, that, <laughs> oh, I hate that. I hate. That. Yeah, yeah. So I, I keep track of it that way. And yeah. if if we look at if we just count each you know box set and purchase as one thing, then I've yeah. got about nineteen hundred here. Oh, that's uh, pretty and then, good. That's pretty good. Yeah, and if you add movies if you add all the movies that are in box sets then it's probably about 2500 movies yeah yeah that's it yeah um i think i'm about uh 1800 all up i think but like that the, the majority of it's all superhero stuff for me right. i've i've kind of niched it down shall we say <laughs> yep. but um as far as picking them up like myself i'm a big ebayer from way back that that's where i get the majority of mine how about you where do you where do you find most of yours do you do ebay amazon do you like getting out amongst it and looking through i do like getting out there I, I i go to a lot of uh pawn shops thrift shops goodwills I, I do a lot of that um and if i'm buying new i prefer to do it in store but that's kind of going away <laughs> You can't, can't yeah. hardly find much oh, in the store. It's just getting anymore. harder and harder. As far yeah. as new goes, and even secondhand, it's getting a little bit harder. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's my preferred method. But yeah, I'll, I'll get stuff off Amazon or eBay or uh, uh, Hamilton Book is a really good place to, to shop. Also, I don't know if you're familiar with them. No, no, we. Um, um... They're, they're like an. I, I, I want to say, they're, well, they're mainly a bookstore, so it's like an yeah. overstock, but they got a pretty good selection of, of movies. Um, yep. You just kind of got to scroll through pages after page after page to find what you want. But uh, yeah, yeah, I found some good stuff there too. Um, but if I had my way, I would be, you know, just out in the stores, just finding things. I think I, and, and that I, when I was collecting comics, that used to be for me, I used to say it was the thrill of the hunt. Like you yeah. used to go out there and you'd be flicking through the long boxes and you'd be like, yes here's that he's that it like it's almost like a treasure find like the oh, the exactly. enjoyment i used to get out of that like it's hard to explain to someone who's not a collector yeah they're like that looks boring as hell but to me that was just like <laughs> well, oh the sniff of what like potential in his box you never know it could be what you're looking for i could spend hours in a store just kind of things and trying to find something and then yeah once you find something that you know you didn't know you were going to find it that day it's not like the brand new thing you oh well this came out today so i'm going to get that this is okay yep. let's see what i find and, and then you find something that you might have been looking for in the past or is rare and it's got a cheap price tag on it and you pick it up it's like oh this is it you know this is the my holy grail for at least for today i found <laughs> I found it. And you take you take it up and you're like, I hope he doesn't realize that this is yeah, oh yes. Like, oh, oh this yeah. is a collectible and he charges me more. You're like, oh, I've got it for that, and you scurry out and you're like, Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's happened. That's happened uh, a few times for me. And and I know we're talking superhero movies, but one time I, I was in a pawn shop and and they um they had you know it was on sale because it was near Christmas. They were they had everything on sale, it was like two bucks for Blu-rays or something like that and yep. it so happened to be pretty busy in the store so i picked up a few things i had like five things one of those was lethal weapon box set it had all four movies on it blu-ray oh, and nice. you know 
I hand them to the guy and, and I've got a stack of like 10 movies, including that. And he just kind of starts ringing them up and he looks at me. He's like, yeah, give me eight bucks. Eight bucks? Here, here. <laughs> take, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> so I basically got a lethal weapon box set with all four movies for like, you know, 80 cents. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> cool. That's it. You're like, you can't get it out quick enough. You're like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm the same. There's a um, there's a secondhand store in another town just over uh, where I live, and uh, they m- mostly do retro games and stuff like that. But they also do DVDs, and he's got boxes and boxes. And I'm the same. Like I'll say to the missus or the kids, I, I, I'm you, I'll drop you off at the supermarket or whatever. I'm going in there. I'll be gone for an hour. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they're like. I've taken my youngest Lucy in there to have a look and she's like, just they're bored out of her mind. And I'm just rifling through all these DVDs. <laughs> look at this one. And she's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's, there's a really big place called McKay's not too far from, but it's about an hour. They're actually moving closer to me about an hour away. And yeah. it, it so happens to be in the same town where my, my daughter goes to college. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes if I go pick her up or something, I'll just stop in there. And for me, stopping in, yeah, that could be an hour, two hours thing. Yeah, so that's it. I took her with me one day, and she's she knows she knows who I am, so she wasn't too bad about it. And she sees me kind of you know rifling through things, and in this store they have an actual section. It's it wasn't marked superheroes; it's marked like TV series and an, uh, animated TV series, but a lot of superhero stuff is in this section, movies yep. or TV shows. Yeah, and I'm just kind of rifling through and rifling through. And, uh, you know, I, I found one or two things and then I walked away. I went on to another section and then she, let me make sure I can find it. Ah, here it is. She just kind of walks up to me. She walks up to me and then she just throws this in my hand. She says, here, take this. You missed it. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and this is, uh, if you couldn't read it, this was the new Spider-Man, the new animated series. I'm so yeah she that was the one that i think uh mtv did yeah this is tv yeah 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 yeah. i think i think mtv produced it or something was it mtv i don't even i don't remember if it was MTV. i don't know for some reason that but i remember it was like a 3d animated one it was one of the very early sort of 3d animated cartoons at the time i don't think i've watched this one so i've seen oh god i think i've probably seen half of it it's not too bad okay uh, from what i can remember but yeah yeah, so that that was I think cool. It, so she, yeah, she just kind of chucks it into my hands, and I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? And it was, that was actually only about two bucks, so that was that was. Cool. Oh, that's a good buy. Yeah, yeah, I think I bought mine when it, not long after it came out years ago because there wasn't much out at that time. There was, I think, it was either just before or just after the first Tobey Maguire Spider Man, if I remember rightly. Okay, I'm thinking, oh, it's just to me memory now, but yeah, yeah, I remember it was a. But yeah, you could, everywhere it was everywhere on the shelves. Um, so like like I said, we love love the old brick and mortar stores. Love to go check them out. But as we both know, physical media collecting is becoming almost a, almost a collector's niche now. It's the, like uh, at least here in Australia, um, our we used to be able to go to like uh, Kmart or big w sort of like your walmart's i suppose um and you used to be able to pick up some good buys that now kmart and big w don't sell any dvds at all or so they don't do any of that type of stuff the only real place for us uh is jb hi-fi which i think if i'm not mistaken is kind of like your best buys i think it's a similar type of stores um so for us here it's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking it just gets harder and harder to to pick up stuff what about in the states of this can you, you still get get it get a lot of stuff in a variety of places or it it's shrinking here too um for us for best buy that you mentioned um they stopped carrying movies altogether. uh oh, they they made that announcement at the end of 2023 and yeah. like right now they're you know if you go into a best buy that has any is basically they're just trying to sell off what whatever they had left so they're yeah. not getting any new stock in. And so that and that was a big one for a lot of collectors because, you know, they had the exclusive steel books that a lot of people liked and they had a pretty good most blockbusters. You still had, you know, three or four rows of movies 
and yeah. uh, three or four aisles, I should say. And, you know, now they started shrinking over the last two years and now they're all gone completely. Target uh, is doing the same thing. They, they, well, they haven't officially said they're out, but you know, the, the, it just keeps shrinking. You know, it used to be two or three aisles of movies. Then it was two, then it was one. And then now it's an end cap and, or, and half a shelf. And, and so it just keeps shrinking. And, um, of uh, Walmart, it, the, you know, they're, they're kind of like the three quarters in one quarter out on physical media. Oh, <laughs> so, <okay. laughs> so you, you, you go into Walmart, they all have, you know, DVDs in it, but they're not all the same. Like, you know, most chains, you pretty much find the same thing in every store for the most part with a couple of exceptions. Well, yeah. here it's like, okay, you go into one store. Yeah, you get a lot of the same stuff, but the focus is different. So this one store might have a ton of TV stuff. This okay. other store, it might have more re new releases and 4Ks and things like that. And then this other store might have all the steel books that they've gotten because Walmart's tried to pick up the slack on the steel books, but it's just so hit or miss with with them. And they don't they don't care enough to uh, restock the shelves on a regular basis all the, at all the stores. You know, yeah, some stores yeah. they'll do it, you know, pretty well. And then at other stores, it'll be, you know, every other month practically, you know, they'll go, oh, yeah. yeah, let's put these out. And you just see the shelves just getting emptier and emptier and emptier. And then some some stores even are shrinking it like Target. You know, it's down to one aisle or one shelf or an end cap. And uh, so it, it's getting harder in that in that way. It's 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 not just you guys. It's becoming collectors niche pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it it, it just yeah, it, it, and it's the same. Like I like talking about the same thing is that like the Kmart's and Big W's here were the same. Like there was like three or four aisles of as much as you could see. They'd have big specials where they'd run all these like little gondolas up the aisles and stuff where, you know, cheap movies. And then it was back to this and then that. And then like, yeah, like you said, just almost like running them out slowly to the point of like, that's it. Nothing. Right. You're just like, right. yeah, it just, it, it, it kind of, it, it's hard. It, I've just watched it gradually just get harder and harder to be a collector. Like if you're not, it's almost like if you're not online, you're, like, you're almost that's going to be our safe haven, I suppose. Is like is it like they, they collect the stuff online to get yeah. what we need because it's just the whole brick and mortar thing is just almost becoming a bygone era in in a way. Yeah, you gotta you, you gotta be online and and yeah, I mean it, it's cool you find things, but it, it's not the same thrill of the hunt that we were talking about before. Uh, that's oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, you're just kind of scrolling and clicking and going, okay, what am I looking for? Here's 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 this. I, I can type in the search and for it and find it for the most part. Yeah. It's just you a matter of am I gonna, There's no, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do I want to yeah. pay whatever they're asking? That's the only, you know, issue. Um, yeah. you, you can kind of get that thrill if you look at some of the secondhand sites, like maybe not really so much eBay, but, you know, if there, there are sites out there, like, I don't know if you guys have uh, Declutter or or even some i mentioned the hamilton book but there's declutter and then there's you know some yep. of these other places that sell secondhand and yep. they don't really advertise their, their inventory so you can kind of go in there and be like oh well this is cool that they have this that and the third um yep. but yeah it's definitely getting harder to to be someone who likes to be out there and put their hands on things yeah yeah and i suppose um recently like disney have finally said to us here in australia buggy you guys you're not getting anything um and like we're not going to do physical media but then they kind of change their mind and then they're like oh okay so here's uh here's a couple of steel books here's loki and wandavision just to keep you happy and um to breaking news actually i'll just have a quick look over here i this just hit like an hour ago before we come on and they've just announced that they're going to release uh obi-wan kenobi on steelbook and or uh and uh where is it here captain america and the falcon on a steelbook and moon knight on right. a steelbook so i only just saw that and just looking at the pictures here looking pretty good too they're actually putting I mean, it's become it's more of a collector's item as opposed to like a mass produced thing. But they're kind of, I don't know if they they've listened to people and gone, oh shit, okay, they do actually want physical media. Like, 
You know what I mean? They pulled hard back, but now they're like, oh, crap. Okay, yeah, maybe there is some money out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, at least because I bought, I got um, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier on a bootleg copy, which the the Chinese bootlegs out there are, are pretty good at the moment. Like they, you almost wouldn't know the difference unless you look closely because um, I thought, well, they're never going to release it, but now they've decided to. And it does look pretty good, but yeah, it's just this trickle you know, like where you used to be able to rely on it coming out every, you know, yeah. few months afterwards. It's yeah, and and they they realize it's really just collectors that's that's asking for it for the most yeah. part, uh, and you can tell because the way they release it, like you said, one it trickles out, but two there's yeah. not that really many options on it. You know, a, a new release from Disney or any of these major companies. Is usually you know there's a DVD, there's a Blu-ray, there's a 4K, yeah. or maybe not a 4K, but definitely a DVD and a Blu-ray. And yeah, yeah. with these, if you've noticed, yeah, you get a 4K and a Blu-ray, but it's like okay, you can only get it in the steel book, or you can only get it this way, or you can only get it that way. You know, you don't yeah, you just you can don't only get it. it at a premium price. Yeah, right, exactly. So, so you know, they're kind of catering to to us in one way, but then you know, trying to stick us in the gut at the same time <laughs> <laughs> you want your physical but yeah you could pay for it yeah, exactly exactly and and yeah, they were um, cheap dvds for you <laughs> that's right that's right and and oh. they're there you know what they're they're doing a lot of things with physical media that that uh i wish they would make up their mind what are they gonna what are they in or they're not in um, because yeah, you know, along with what they're doing with you guys here in, in America, you know, recently Disney, the movie Disney Movie Club, that sh is shutting down uh, completely. Yep. They announced that. Um, then they announced that Sony's going to take up some of their uh, physical media, so like new stuff is going to come out, be put out by Sony, but then nobody knows how much other, you know, how much access Sony really has to their catalog and what they're going to put out, and that's yep. followed by. Was it last year? It was either I think it was Mill Creek or was it, uh, I think it was Mill Creek that they licensed yeah. out a bunch of stuff to, or they said they did, and I don't recall seeing not one release from <laughs> from them. As well, far that was as like um, that was like um, for for us here in Australia, they Disney said right, Guardians of the Galaxy three was going to be it. That would be the last. I don't know if it was that and the Indiana Jones might have been. The dollar Destiny might have been the last Disney releases here in Australia before they go. That's it. We're not doing any more. Mm -hmm. I have not seen a physical copy of Guardians of the Galaxy three here in Australia anywhere. Wow. They said that was going to be the last one. Whether it was limited and it ran out quick, I don't know. But I just recently had to buy one off Amazon UK uh, for about twenty bucks to like to actually get a copy because bugger me, I can't find one here in australia anyway so it's that same type of thing they say they're going to do it but then you're like did they do it like was yeah, it all just exactly. like a, a bit of a ruse <laughs> yeah and it's you know even with something you know some of their animated stuff like they licensed out with it wally to criterion and we then everybody got all excited well maybe they're gonna start putting out more disney stuff it just never happens and yeah. and, and i'm like you it's like you know there's money on the table Oh, I mean, really, exactly. they could just sit back and collect money and just say, here, here's Sony, here, whoever, you just take over here. Here's all the access to all of our stuff as far as physical media is concerned. Put out whatever you want. You pay us whatever it is. You pay us per title. And uh, that's all they got to do is they'll sit back and collect the money. And but, that's that's something uh, like uh, when I heard about the Disney going to Sony and doing that, it's like, exactly. Like, if you feel that it's not something that you feel is worthwhile, and there are other companies quite happy to produce it or can produce it at a decent cost. Why not license it out to them? Right, yeah, yeah, here's your slice of it. Here's our slice of it. We don't have to do anything. We just provide you with the content. You yeah. do all the work. Yeah. We, we take, still get our yeah. money. Yeah, you know, give us then, our money, keep our logo on it somewhere, and we're happy. Yeah, that's it. And then you're keeping collectors happy. You're keeping audiences happy. You still got that presence out there, but at, at like minimal cost to you so it's uh, to me it seems like a bit of a no-brainer in that sense like if if you are that worried about having to have your own factories and this and that and whatever else yeah license it out there there's heaps of companies 
there's such so many boutique companies that are desperate to want to put stuff out because they know there's money to be made. Yes. Why not? Why not especially offer it up to these? Yeah, yeah. especially offer. a Disney product because that's I mean that's like printing money practically. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you said, there's just money sitting on the table there that they're like, oh, no, nah, there's no money in that. And it's like, no, there isn't. There is a there's a definite market out there. You know, granted the market's not as huge as it used to be, but there's still a market out there. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's money to be made. Like you, you want to make money or not? You know, like actually that could probably lead into my next question is like speaking of madam web um <laughs> <laughs> talk about not make any money there um like for, for you like um not only are they kind of stepping away from physical media but they haven't really disney really haven't been firing real well lately when it comes to i mean granted madam web's a sony one but like this whole thing with like the Marvels and Madam Web and what they've been releasing lately has just been like absolute garbage lately. Like, at what point do they kind of go, yeah, maybe we should really start maybe going back to what we did was good? Like, like this, like, yeah, is, is so, this a turning point you reckon is at this point? I hope it is because I, I heard some actually some encouraging things earlier today. Uh, yep. One speaking about Madam Web in particular, I, I still haven't seen Madam Web. I know I'm gonna no, see it, but no, I haven't seen no. it yet. Um, I'm waiting to. I hate to say it. I'm waiting for the physical media copy to buy. Yeah. Like, I went to. I and the funny thing is, I went to my daughter Lucy, the audience that they wrote this movie for, and even she looked at me and said, mm, "Do you really want to go?" <laughs> like that's the audience they made this for, and she even was like, "Yeah, I don't really want to go see it." Like, right, you know what I mean. Like if that's that was the audience they were looking for, and even that audience is just like, yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, oh, no. Nah. So the the encouraging thing I heard about that really though was Dakota Johnson. I interviewed Dakota Johnson, dude, who anybody out there doesn't know, she stars as Madam Web. Um, yep. so basically what she was saying was how that movie and a lot of other movies, particular superhero movies, you know, they're getting made by committees, and that's a huge problem. Yep, and it is. we already yeah. knew this. I mean, you get you get this, you get an army of writers, you get the director, but then the director's got all the executives in his ear telling them to do it this way or do it that way. And we got to make sure we relate it back to this movie and sell toys for this character and so on and so forth until we get yeah. whatever message. We need to hit, the theaters. hit that demographic and we want that demographic and we want this one to watch it and we want that demographic to have it. And there's all that bullshit right. in it as well. Yeah. So, so it was nothing like brand new that she said, nothing groundbreaking, but it's just the fact that someone in one of the movies said it. So that that was encouraging. Like, hey, maybe somebody might take notice if the star of your movie is telling you that you guys all coming together to, to try to make something, you know, with 4,000 chefs in this kitchen is crap. Maybe you yeah. guys might listen. And then the yeah, other right. encouraging thing I heard, well, semi-encouraging. This was a whole Bob, Bob Iger, who's the CEO of Disney. Yeah. Uh, he he was talking about uh, really about uh, having more quality control on the the products that Disney's putting out, especially in concerns uh, where it concerns the MCU. You know, he's like, well, okay, you know, one of the things I'm I'm gonna do is you know, I'm sitting in on these movies and I'll be watching these movies with the creators and over and over and over and making sure that you know we're putting out quality products. And I say semi encouraging because, you know, it's one of those things where he says it, but like we talked about the physical media, is it actually going to happen? I hope yeah, it does. And I, think, and I think that that is something that for me, I think that is where it's let them down is the, the quantity over quality. You know, I yep. would rather two or three really good shows than 30 crappy ones. You know what I mean? Like, the collector in me is obviously wants to have as many <laughs> shows as they can be, but I would like them all to be good shows. You know, yeah. I don't want this. I think they got themselves into a bit of a pattern of like, oh, we've got this character, we're, that, we're, we're going to put this out, we're going, to put, uh, we're going to have something on every month in Disney Plus, which kind of felt like that when Disney Plus first hit. It was like there was a new show every other month. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how good can all of it be, this churned out, stuff and as we saw not all of it was great and hit and miss 
and right. then it kind of it, it really tarnishes the reputation if you know what i mean and the the good thing about that is it it seems to have slowed down some i mean we, we're only getting one movie out of the mcu this year and i did then, read that that deadpool and wolverine is the only one we're getting because and because of how bad madam webb pretty much went they're like right we're just gonna start start and starve yeah. the the audience i suppose and even the shows have seemed to you know slow down a little bit not much now yeah. i'm i'm of the opinion that the shows honestly they gotta they gotta stop tying the shows to the movies for me um because yeah. i watch all the marvel content and i don't know if you do or not if you watch all the disney plus shows i do but yeah. you know i'm into the superhero thing everybody you know doesn't want to have to have watched three four tv series when they go in to see a movie you know you don't want to give them homework it's funny you know i think in that sense is that they looked at the movies i think the success of the movies just tying those little bits together and it becomes this big narrative right and they're like oh well well then we have to tie everything together but then you're right not everyone um is like me and yourself who want to watch all everything not everyone does some people may just want to watch the winter soldier maybe just want to watch loki that's my favorite character i just want to watch that but to understand that you need to have watched all 15 20 movies and all five other tv shows exactly, because we exactly. all had to connect so, them. i mean just going well i mean of course the most recent stuff more recent stuff but i i really felt it with uh the doctor strange and the multiverse of madness you know, yeah. I again, I watched WandaVision, but I could imagine yeah. if you walked in the theater not having seen WandaVision, but maybe you saw it earlier, maybe you saw it Avengers Endgame, okay? And he's like, oh, well, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe let's, difference. Yeah, let's Big go difference watch from Doctor her Strange. from that to that. Yeah, it's a whole different person. You're like, what the hell is happening? How, why is this happening? Why is she like, yeah, this? that's it. And then if, if you didn't watch that show, that movie makes no sense. Like, like you said, from that movie to that movie, it's, yeah, you didn't see the whole breakdown of her psyche and then getting held by the dark book or whatever it was and blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah, if you did know that, then Multiverse of Madness just makes no sense. Like, how did she turn bad all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's fine to have all the, all, you know, the Disney the Disney Plus shows, but I mean, don't don't make it homework for people. If you, if yeah. you want to help your movies, if you want to help your movies from going down, because like you said, you know, it's, it's daunting if, you, if you're not into superhero movies and somebody says, hey, let's go see the latest, even Guardians of the Galaxy. And you're like, OK, well, you know, there's been 30 of these movies, 30 something movies. I, I, I've only yeah. seen like four. You know, I'm going to be lost. That's a, it's a pretty daunting That's task it. for for somebody not into it like we are. Yeah. And I, and I get there's nothing like having a nod to another movie. Uh but having that movie be a separate entity, I suppose, um, in almost like comic books are like, you know, these separate stories that you right. can pick up at, at any moment, read it and it all makes sense. Right. And, that, and unfortunately they're falling into that trap of like, oh, this is what's successful is that we connected all these movies, but now it's not so much because of, you know, people aren't watching all of these movies now and then avoiding these other ones because they're like uh because i don't know what happened in the last ones i probably don't yeah yeah so they're losing yeah. audience because of that what they thought was successful is now a curse for them in, in another way yeah it, it's you know what people they forget about those comic books is like you said you could pick up any one and you read it and it's a complete story it makes yeah. perfect sense and it, People will then say, well, you know, they had this big crossover event in the comics or this one, you know, you know, we had a crisis on this earth and we had uh, all these, you know, civil war. We had all these big events in the comics. But what they fail to realize is that every comic that Marvel was putting out leading up to it didn't necessarily tie into it and yeah. have to you know have to be a part of it you know they were still telling their own separate stories and then this big event was its own thing you usually yeah because a lot of those stories used to be at least from what i remember like say the infinity gauntlet or infinity crisis or crisis on the infinite earth or secret wars or you know i could keep going they were their own mini series right they would tie in from the other stories but they used to be their own things 
and you can still go back to the regular issues and they still have that separate story i suppose still makes sense and and we're losing yep. that with the movies is it's like you said it's it's you know everything has to tie in because they feel like they have to do it and yeah that we was... have to join it all together when you not necessarily like sure you can have a tip of the hat here and a tip of the hat there but yeah yeah trying to jam them all together to be like well this story has to go onto this so we can tell the next one and tell the mm-hmm. next one mm-hmm. yeah if people are only going to watch spits and spats then yeah you're going to lose an audience because they're going to like well i haven't watched the other so i won't yeah so yeah and, and, and i think i think that's it and then it affects the quality of the movies because then you're, you're really just you're making a collection of easter eggs <laughs> rather than trying to tell a coherent story you know, and, that, that, and that seems to be a bit of a problem is they're so busy trying to connect these movies and stories and well a, a great example for that i feel is like uh batman versus superman was oh, yeah you, that was that was two separate stories that was the dark knight returns and the death of superman jammed into one movie you've got two major stories tried to just squeeze into one to then create this to, to use as a platform to make the justice league like it was just the worst idea yeah I have ever and, seen. and then like, you you know what on to, to add to that you had those two major stories but then throughout that movie you just kept having these little mini trailers for other movies that never came out that was the you know we had okay we got to show people this flash and we we got that scene and we we got to yeah. show people cyborg and we got that scene and then we had yeah. the uh, i can't even remember who they were when Aquaman. bruce was having the nightmare and they're coming through oh yeah yeah it's like yeah, just, to, to, just to tell me yeah. the story <laughs> yeah and that's it that's it and i felt like it should have been you tell one or you tell the other but it was clearly like let's jam these two together and then that'll take us to justice league and it's like yeah. well and i think that was where their problem was is dc clearly wanted to replicate what marvel was doing but they were trying to do it at like five times the pace right and that's and that's where those movies suffer is because they're trying to jam so much in such a short amount of time yeah that you got that like don't get me wrong like i liked watching some of batman versus superman like i love seeing them fight it out and i like this and i like that but the story is terrible like it's just a mishmash of everything <laughs> yeah it, it is it is it was and i i, I remember going to see that when in my i brought with my brother and uh it just felt so long. I mean, I, I felt like I was sitting there for th- three or four days. I was like, yeah. <laughs> this is going to stop. <laughs> Put me out of my misery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's it. It was just, yeah. I mean, like, I've kind of felt like it was visually good to watch, but mm-hmm. well, except Doomsday, God, he looked horrible. Like, oh, agree. I, how hard is it to make him look like he does in the comics? He looks so awesome in the comics. Why? Oh, anyway. That, that I could sit here and pick that movie apart all day anyway. But yeah, it makes a great example of why you shouldn't rush these things. But um, I suppose that, that kind of leads into one of my next questions is, do you feel like the MCU's lost its way? Like they seem to have such a great um, one, two, three phase where they had this clear, end, well, pardon the pun, end game, but now they're just floundering. They just don't seem to know where to go yeah because i i think they're they're making it up as they go along in, in a um as far as what they want to be the overarching story and they thought yeah. they had it with the with kang and then you know that whole thing fell apart and i'd rather oh, not go into that yeah, for right yeah, now yeah. uh but <laughs> yeah. hey look look at all my eggs in this one basket whoops exactly exactly <laughs> and 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 that and on, on top of that though they they're struggling with again fitting in all those easter eggs trying to tie everything yep. together still and with tone they're they're afraid it's it's almost like they're afraid to let their audience have real feelings you know there, yep. there's like love and thunder was really bad about this we get you know we 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 have this whole storyline with Kristen bale's character the god killer and he's um you know, it's it's really it's a heavy storyline, and Christian Bale is he's pouring his heart into it. He did a great job. He's and it's 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 
really sad and it's got it's got real gravitas the whole storyline but it's like you know pushed off into a corner of the movie and then yeah. with thor we get the same thing with thor and jane you know there there could be a real relationship there real you know real uh examination of their relationship and and there are times when it starts to get to that where it's really mature and emotional but everything has to be undercut by a silly joke exactly and, and that's and, and that was and, the detriment to that movie was that yeah and you they do that in great, several movies yeah and, and, and that's and that's right it's that i suppose it, looking at it like marvel was always considered to be that just that more light-hearted version i suppose dc is more that dark version mm -hmm. um and they finally look like they're gonna attempt some really like you said the, the christian bale story is a great tragic story um then you know, like jane foster dealing with cancer there's another great story you could sink your teeth into yeah right. like you said we've got screaming goats and this and that and it, all these stupid that yeah. just take away every time you build something up the stupid joke deflates it and then you're back to square one again and it's like it just kept happening and like christian bale like the most underutilized villain you had in a marvel movie that i've seen like yeah. he could be just tearing it up and yet he like you said he's just pushed this one little corner like his whole setup is you don't even see it they call him the god killer you see him kill one and that was nope. it like nope. it, we... he didn't really build up such a menacing presence in my thing like he it was all just talked about like he never saw anything yeah exactly they, they just told you they didn't show you and um you know they they constantly you know they're they're really leaning hard into that that 13 on the in america at least it's pg-13 yeah, PG yeah. they're, they're leaning hard on that 13 like hey we got to get 13 year olds you know to like this and to buy toys <laughs> so that they, they they just you know everything has got to be super silly at some point so instead of the Kristen bell storyline or jane dealing with cancer instead of us really digging into those we got like you said the screaming goat so we got uh thor and the 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 love triangle with Mjolnir and his uh his dual yeah. weapon or we yeah. got russell crowe and doing whatever that was, oh. <laughs> was that he was doing oh, the, the fairy version of zeus like that was terrible oh yeah God. yeah, yeah he, exactly like you, you're almost throwing away some great story there by doing some of these silly stupid things like it's just it's yeah inexcusable inexcusable that was that's for sure yeah. But that seems to be the like and that's kind of what i was sort of saying is that they had this real clear-cut plan like the movies all seem to flow into each other like n to me none of it seemed really forced the ends like they would just have those nice little end scenes that would tie the next movie in right nice plan they had it worked out from day dot that they were going to go from i think iron man one all the way to end, end, end game but now they seem to not it doesn't seem like a clear cut path if you know what i mean because they seem to pivot here or they rewrite this or they change that or they they're really reactive like it's a very wonky road yes to they're wherever definitely, they're going to definitely reacting to whatever the audience has said lately and yeah that's, where, that's, where before yeah. they just powered through with that they didn't listen they just did what they did and we got this great thing but now they're very reactive and this, yeah, yeah so straight path is very all over the shop yeah and in, in in sports and at least in american sports there's an adage about managers and coaches and they say if you start listening to the to the audience you start listening to the fans you know yep. you'll be sitting out there with them and that's yep. kind of what's happening here with with marvel and we saw it happen really with the star wars the last three star wars movies it's you know they'll make something see what the audience says and then react to it just like you said and and that leads us to things like you know we had to have kang in everything yeah we didn't see thanos but for you know a couple of uh, end scene or two until so end, end scene of avengers uh end and one was guardians of the galaxy, of the galaxy. yep and um so he was only just teased and he yeah, was teased, teased enough that you were so ex well at least i was so excited to finally see him when he did finally show up Right. yeah you're right you didn't need to see him in everything you yeah, teased him enough he, so when he finally showed up and we got to really see him you know yeah. it was a, it was a big deal and they executed the character well 
Whereas yes. with Kang on the, you know, they stuck him in Ant Man, and they, they stuck him in this movie, and he, you know, he shows up a little bit of everywhere. And I, I, I think the I think he... the best place he was, the the best part of his story, the best job they did with his story was actually in the second season of Loki. Yeah. Um, and that, to be honest, you know, with given everything that's happened with Jonathan Majors, that's actually a good wrapping up point for his story. Yeah. So it gives them a chance to pivot again, but of course they have to pivot again, which who knows where they're going to go. Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember where I heard it. Um, I can't remember exactly the quote, but it kind of goes into what you're saying about uh, sports. Like if you start listening to the, um, uh, I think it might've been from wrestling because I'm a bit of a wrestling fan, but there's a quote like the audience does know what they want. Like don't listen to the audience. They don't know what they want. You just right. give them, you like, like you said, when you start listening to them and you give them what they want, they're not there to do it. It's like they they don't know what they really want. Kind of like you like that. It's, it's similar now. I can't remember the exact phrasing, but it it reminds me of that. Is like as soon as you start listening to the audience and let them tell you what to make, that's when it all falls over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're gonna they're gonna hate it anyway. Once you once you make it. Because <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a, there's going to be some people who didn't want that, you know, exactly. and, and, and it all depends on what part of that audience you're listening to. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. Like, so yeah, you, you know, should never make it. Never let the audience tell you what to make. You should just make it the way you want it. And if they want to see it, they'll go see. It, you know, like the old "you've built it, and they'll come" type sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, and and yeah, I think that's with this pivoting and whatever else it just it just kind of shows a, a company of you know the wheels have fallen off they just don't know where to go or what to do they just lost the direction you know it, as yeah, as you yeah start... they're, they're they're struggling to pull it together they're not sure where to go and then you hear about all these other uh issues with some of the upcoming movies i know blade was a big one whether you know the star is in the star is out and which direction yeah. we're going to make would take this, with this director movie. wants to be in this director's out there's yeah, yeah there's all that type of stuff it's um like do you do you do you believe in the like i keep hearing this i personally don't subscribe to it but do you think there there is such thing as superhero fatigue in the sense I, I don't i think it's an excuse for people just saying they're tired of being a bad watching bad movies yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and that's exactly where I am. I am on that page of I can watch superhero movies to the end of my days. I will never have superhero hero fatigue. A, a lot of fans of that genre won't have that. You you may have a little bit of it in general population. I can understand that. You know, people can get tired of stuff. But I'm very much on your page where I find that's a cheap excuse for the fact that they've been pumping out rubbish lately. And mm -hmm. if you pump out quality, the audience will come. It's as simple as that. Take the yeah. time, make a good movie. You you can keep superhero movies going for decades. People just want good stories. It's not necessarily the fact that you've packaged, wrapped it up in a superhero story. We just want good stories. Yeah, think, exactly. Uh, yeah. I think James Gunn said something similar. Uh, I saw an interview with him not long ago where he said the same thing. He goes, I could watch superhero movies forever, but if they're bad, I'm not going to go to it. So it's not necessarily that there's fatigue in the sense of I'm sick of seeing these movies. It's just that there hasn't been anything good worth watching. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Because like you said, if they make a good one, people will go see it. And yeah, I mean, that's right. God, Guardians made a ton of money last year, Guardians 3. and yeah, it was great, yeah. But the other, some of the other movies that came out, superhero movies didn't, and because they were bad. I mean, Black Adam didn't do well; it was bad. <laughs> I, I understand yeah. why it didn't do well. Aquaman yeah. two didn't do well because it was bad. <laughs> Shazam, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, same thing. Right. Yeah, that's it. You make a good one, people will come. It's as simple as that. And yeah, I hate how they keep using this term, and they're just like pounding it into people, almost like. That's why you don't go to the because th you're sick of superhero movies. No, no, keep them coming, but give us something worth watching. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think people like to to do that because or like to say that because it's um, you know, for the longest time, superhero stuff was just for the nerdy people, just for just for the geeks, just for, just us for geeks, the nerds, yeah. and yeah. 
you know, it kind of popped up. You know, of course, there were the Superman and Batmans like we talked about earlier. But, you know, since really since Blade going forward, there were superhero movies almost every year and people started getting into it. So it's like, OK, other people start looking at it like, OK, it's the trend. And now the trend is, is running out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, that, like, that fad started to burn out sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So if you, but if if you make good movies, you know people are gonna go. And and this is and this really is across genres. I mean, I'm I'm also I didn't mention this earlier, but I, I like gangster movies too. Yep. If you make a bunch of bad gangster movies in a row, it's not that I'm tired of gangster movies. Is you're making bad movies, so make a good one. So same thing here with with superheroes. You know, I, the character of Thor. I love the character of Thor. You make they make another Thor movie. I'll probably go see it, but a lot of people will not because they're gonna be like, "Oh, Love and Thunder was horrible." And That's right. And, and, and so you got to prove it to them by making a good movie and getting people back out there. And that's um, to use an example, like um, like you said, gangster movies. Well, another one I read about not long ago was like rom coms. Remember yeah. rom coms? Oh, because the reason I know is because my missus would drag me to all these rom coms. I was right. like. Yeah, I was sure you you you're in the same boat. Like, oh yeah, the amount of rom com movies I would go to with my missus, um, and there'd be one every other couple of months, and they were all good. Now they like she's like, oh, there's nothing on the cinema for me to watch. There is such a dry spell of rom coms because of they kind of started getting bad. So then all of a sudden there was like, oh well, there's not an audience for it, and I kind of feel like it's the, the same cycle is happening again and again and again like across yeah. genres in that sense yeah it, it definitely is it's, it, you know if, if you tell me good stories i'll find it and people will find it people will go see it regardless of the genre if you tell me good stories because yeah. i mean it's just like the biggest one one of the biggest ones that we talked about infinity war and endgame how many how many people who were not marvel fans went to see those movies you know the it wasn't right. just superhero fans that that got those movies to what almost two billion dollars each. You know, it wasn't just us. You know, yeah. people who were not into that went and saw those movies. There were people I know people who went to see Endgame who hadn't seen a Marvel movie before, but because of the hype yeah. was so strong and they heard it was really good, they went and saw it. So yeah, if, you, um, if you tell good stories, you know, people will come out and see them. Yeah, I, I can vouch for that. I had a story. Um, I think it was uh, not Endgame, but Infinity War. Um, if uh, the um, so me and Lucy went to like I think because we have them released on a Thursday here, so I think we went the I think it was might have been Friday or Saturday. Anyway, packed cinema. Like we had to find a seat. Like not often that happens, you know. Mm -hmm. um, every seat was taken up. And we're just sitting next to this like old couple who, like you said, they're not superhero fans. But and we, me and me and Lucy were just like, oh my god, oh my god. And they're like, what are you so excited about? What's so big about him? Like, yeah, why exactly. are you even here? <laughs> 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 we were just losing our shit. Like, oh my god, they're turning it dust. They lost. They did. We were just losing our minds and like yeah this old couple next to us they just went because it's the most popular movie they go oh let's go see what it is and yeah they they, just, they, they watched it and enjoyed it but they couldn't i don't know they weren't emotionally invested as right. me and lucy were. right yeah yeah so they enjoyed it but they they weren't all in on it you know yeah like, and that's like, it and like it's like game. it's like you said it because of this good story because of this good movie people who normally wouldn't watch it are going to go see it but Madam Webb's this great example of a movie that has literally been panned by everyone, and the word on the street is like it's the worst, potentially the worst superhero movie ever. Um, so of course audiences are going to steer clear of it. But like that's why I always say to Lucy, like this is kind of my well second job, <laughs> as right. I like call it. Like I should be going to see that movie. Yet even I'm like, eh, I'm yeah, exactly. give it a miss. <laughs> like yeah, like like. It's Look, uh, I'm 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 in that. It's pretty much in that same boat, and and my my wife and I we we'll go, we go to movies a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. At least by our standards, by standards of people we know in real life, we go a lot. So yeah. 
she's she's not like into superheroes like I am, but when a superhero movie comes out, she's right there with me. She's like, Oh yeah, let's go see it. Yeah. So she's seen all the Marvel movies and everything. She's yeah. emotionally invested, at least in the MCU, uh yeah. and maybe even the DCEU like we are, because she's yeah. seen them all. And so, you know, she but she doesn't follow like what's coming out. So she yeah. she didn't really know Madam Webb was coming out until really recently. Yeah. And um, so she's like, yeah, we're going to go see Madam Web. I was like, I don't know. Uh, and then she, <laughs> and that, yeah, I said, I said that she kind of looked at me like, we're like, why, why would you, you say sure? that? You know, you, you, we always go see the superhero movies. And yeah. so I was like, yeah, you know what? Let's, let's go see it. Cause those are two movies we wanted to, we, well, we were talking about seeing it was Madam Web. And then the Bob Marley movie was the other one. So yeah. we went and saw that one, went and saw the Bob Marley movie. And then she came home from work one day and she's like, yeah, I've heard some people work say Madam Web is pretty bad. I don't know if I want to go see that one. And, <laughs> and it takes a lot for her to uh, to say that about a movie because she's one of those people who, if she watches a movie, she's generally going to like it. Yeah. And she, so she's not a, not a, a, a critic like I, like I am more or less. So she'll ask me a movie, you know, my score is like 99 times out of a hundred is going to be lower than hers. It's, it's yeah. just the way it is. <laughs> and to have her even be like, I don't, I don't know if I want to go see that. That lets me know that the word of mouth is out there about this thing. And, and not just, it was just in real life. People are like, no, this is horrible. Yeah. And that's it. Like, I was the same. I was so surprised when Lucy says to me, yeah, Dad, I'm going to give this one a miss, I think. I just, the word out there is pretty bad, this, that. She's like, there's nothing really about it that interests me in that sense, even though, like, she's always there right next to me. We're both at every superhero movie that's out there. Um, and, yeah, for her to be like, and I'm like, this is, you're the audience. <laughs> you're the yeah. ones that they wrote this for. And even you're just like, yeah, I'm not doing this one. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah okay, exactly. This can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, have you have you seen the new like the post about the Fantastic Four with Pedro Pascal as uh, Mister Fantastic? Have you seen any news on uh, that? I or, haven't actually. They released a. I think it was at Valentine's Day. They did a post where they announced all the cast for fantastic four and hey, pedro pascal is going to be mr fantastic um oh shit i'd have to look up the others but um i mean they look uh i'm just i don't know i'm oh uh, i'm not sure about pedro as mr fantastic i he's a great actor but oh is he the right choice to to do this like we've yeah. had so many failed attempts is I, I try like, to be I don't hands want to write off. Him off, but yeah, I try to be real hands off about who's cast, be, yeah. because I was one of the ones way way back in the day when they announced Michael Keaton was going to be Batman. I was like, Mister Mom, him, yeah. that's, that's Batman, and I was one of those. And then I, and I, I don't know, he turned out to be great. So, and ever since, I'm I'm kind of like, you know what? Let's see how it works. <laughs> Let's just yeah, see how it works. I, like. Look, I'm not, I'm not writing the movie off uh, totally. Like, um, I'm curious to see what other people think because I know, I, I, I was a bit the same. Like, I remember when Heath Ledger got cast as Joker, everyone's like, yep. "Really? Uh, okay, uh, I don't know how this is going to go." And of course, he was, you know, he won an Oscar for it or whatever. Like, you, you just, you sometimes you really, you, I suppose you don't get to see the test screenings. You don't get to see the vision. You don't get to see all that. You just hear that this person's got this job. I suppose you don't know the backstory to it. Like I know a lot of people were really poo pooing Ben Affleck as Batman, and I was a bit like, eh, I don't know if he can. And for me, I really enjoyed his Batman. Like I thought he did a decent job. Um, granted, he didn't have great stories, but as Batman, the character, I think he was he was all right. Um, so it's the same with this. I have this real mixed feeling of like. I like this actor, but ew, is he going to pull this role off? Like, if he does, right. it's going to be great. But ew, just got that little apprehension. <laughs> on spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's understandable because yeah, you know, a lot of people were that way with yeah. with Robert Pattinson getting cast as Batman, for instance. They were like the Twilight guy. <laughs> but, oh yeah. Oh and, my god. Oh, the sparkly vampire. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And and for me, I, I had actually seen a movie called Good Time. 
uh, a little while before he got cast. And in that movie, he's, you know, he's kind of a psychopath in that movie, or at least a sociopath. And, uh, and I was like, okay, I, I can understand. He, yeah, he can be Batman. That, that it yeah. works that way. And, and that was a pretty good Batman movie. Like, a, and that was a good solo Batman separate to everything type sort yes. of movie. Like it was great to see Batman as a detective, as opposed to that kind of, that kind of superhero -y type sort of Batman for a change. Right. Yeah. Right. And he, and it, it, a standalone movie. I mean, like you said, it really helped you where it didn't have to worry about tying into everything else. It, it could just tell its own story it can take his time with it and and uh, flesh things out and not have to worry about well you know let's tie it to this or that and that, that yeah it had that really room to it. breathe to be its own thing yeah exactly exactly and that's and i think that's why it was successful in that sense is that like you said with no you didn't have to back end it at this and you didn't have to have it ready to be forwarded into that you could just do your own thing you can write a, you know, and have a decent movie, that separate story, that separate comic book of like, I yeah, call it an Elseworld DC, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is great. Like, I think having that room to move definitely helped help that Batman. So, I suppose, survive to be more successful compared to, say, you know, like the Flash movie that was before and that, like, having right. to tie all that bullshit in sort of thing. Right. And same thing with, with Joker before it. It's like, you know, here yeah, here's exactly. this movie. Don't worry about everything else you saw in, of Joker or yep. or don't worry about see movies out there. Just here. Here's this. Watch this. Yeah, and that was pretty good. Like, it was a great thing on its own sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. Like, I hope it's this... I would like to hope to think it's this new launching point for him. Like, because so. Fantastic Four has been such a, ugh, they've just missed so many times. It's like a, they've got to eventually get it right. <laughs> you think, right? And I suppose, you... I suppose you've got to think like now that Marvel's got the reins on it, even though they haven't exactly done a great job of late, but everyone was kind of like, well, because Fox was doing it, that's why it's all shit. So once Marvel will get it back, they'll do it right. So right, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. And and to be honest with you, that if if it goes well, I mean, you got a potential for another really big bad there with Galactus. You know, that could be the next oh. thing. To I, I hope they actually do a Galactus. And yeah, not not, a, not a cloud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't want the purple cloud. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to see a massive Galactus. <laughs> Call me an old school fanboy. I want to see that guy in the big suit with the. That's big right. Outfit. That's right. <laughs> I don't care how weird or shitty it looks. I want to see Galactus with the, <laughs> the with, with the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the whole kit and caboodle, mate. I want to see it a lot. <laughs> oh, um. So what? Are, okay, here's another one. What about DC? Like, so now DC have got James Gunn at the helm. He's literally just gone right. Just forget about everything. We're starting clean. Let's go. Like, have you seen the lineup for what he's got coming up? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have it memorized, but yeah, I've, I've seen. <laughs> that, well, I just happen to have it here. Uh, here's something I prepared earlier. So we have Superman Legacy coming. Which I've, uh, if you've, if you've been living under a rock at the moment, like every outlet's just posting anything and everything they can, because I think it just started shooting. Um, I, I think I they're think. dropping the legacy from the name is what I heard for that. I think yeah, it's just yeah. Going to be I'm looking at an old, um, an old article that's just got it all listed. But yeah, it's now just Superman. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they only just started. There was like a cast photo with all of the actors. They're going to be in it, and um, I have to admit, I I think they've picked some pretty good people across the board, like to to, to do the, like I always, for me, like I don't want to sound like a James Gunn fanboy, but I'm always been impressed with his movies and everything he's done. I've really enjoyed pretty much everything he's put out. I'm very hard pressed to find something I haven't been a fan of. Not to sit here and just say, well, it's going to be perfect or anything, but. I have a bit more faith that he's going to do it justice, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, um, he's, um, yeah, I, I enjoy his work too. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see what he can do. And 
it seems like they're, they're going to have kind of a mixture, which is kind of what I hope for Marvel, a mixture with, you know, you have the universe that kind of ties into each other, and then you'll have some standalone movies. And Yes, yes. And that's, I, looking at this list, it's very much like that. It's um, They have the nods, I suppose, to this shared universe, but not necessarily having to, like you said, back end everything into each other and whatever else. Um, so like Superman's first then, and as James Gunn does, he loves to pick up like weird and wonderful. So the next one is the authority, which is a wild storm, well, a bunch of wild storm characters that, uh, uh, from Jim Lee's company that got sucked into DC, which I've never heard of. So it sounds very much like what he did with guardians of the galaxy he took a bunch of these lesser known characters that no one really knew unless you're like me and read uh silver right. surfer and uh all that and knew of them <laughs> but the majority of people didn't even know who the hell these people were you know and then make them into this this so there's potential that he's going to take these lesser known characters and and turn them into something really popular you know right. he has that Midas touch in that sense so that that'll be interesting and then we get uh brave and the bold which is a batman and robin story yeah um which is uh i think it's and we get to see damian wayne for the first time on screen oh, so it's going to be damian wayne in that one damian it's all about how bruce discovers that damian is his son and he was taught by talia to be an assassin and that whole story arc now, so that's interesting because brave, brave and the bold is more at least the animated one is more comedy oriented yeah, and damien it's, it's very much brave and the bold is that very much that 40s 50s-esque title i suppose of like which i, I love that cartoon that the, some yeah. of the nods and stuff that that was great that cartoon why they picked brave and the bold i don't know i don't know what it it the, seems to be an odd match with Damien because Damien is a more serious minded character. Yeah. And yeah. Like, so I'm not sure wrong, how I'm that's going to really, work. But I'm curious. Like, the, the title seems a bit off. I'm with you. The title seems off, but I'm really interested to see them finally take Damien because yeah, they've, they've really pushed him a bit more in the uh, cartoon type stuff. It, it'd be good to see him. Yeah. Like finally have his moment on screen if you know what i mean like yeah to see that dynamic of like he's batman's son he just happened to be like a, a lethal trained assassin <laughs> you know like and how he handles being a father <laughs> yeah the, the the movies especially have really struggled with what to do with robin yeah, yeah. they 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 don't you know he's a kid in everything except the movies it's like you know they they they're almost like afraid to put it out there and i i don't know why i don't know what the deal is with that but i well, uh, i would love to be, see like, a live action think of it this way like in the sense of like would people be like here's this guy who who looks after this kid adopts this kid and then yeah. puts him to yeah. work as a crime fighter like you could imagine like that does it's it's not normal <laughs> right this that's true i i you know you're, you're right and i suppose i think the the way it would work best would be maybe in a dark comedy kind of way like in like kick ass where uh, we had yes, hit girl yes. yeah you know? yeah 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 i never thought of that yeah you're right yeah, and, and she was basically worked. robin yeah that's right like i mean christ but was it big daddy he was literally yeah. like he was he, he was adam west he was adam <laughs> yeah, west batman <laughs> And, and Nicholas Cage did a great job too. He did. Um, but yeah, I think that father son dynamic, I think that is a great angle in that sense of like not knowing this kid for so long and then he's resentful of him and kind of how they've really portrayed it in the cartoons. I think it would be a really great, like if it's done properly, obviously, it could be a really great movie. Yeah, yeah, because I and I've I've enjoyed the the uh, the DC animated movies with Damien in yep. them. Um, yeah, because yeah, he, he's a I think he's a great character. Uh, yeah, but he he's, he's he got to be handled well. Well, that's right, that's right. Um, and then we got Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. So that explores uh, what's it got here? Well, Superman was raised on Earth. Supergirl stayed on a piece of Krypton that drifted off. God, how big a piece was that? <laughs> yeah. 
That just sounds. I just got visions of her sitting on like a rock like this, just drifting through space. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of the story of Supergirl. I mean, I've always had a problem with Supergirl as a character because of that. It's like, all right, you, the whole basis of Superman is that he's the last survivor last because survivor. the whole planet exactly. exploded. Exploded, and you're telling me. Okay, he had a cousin who survived hanging on to the to a rock that's floating through space. <laughs> so I, I always have a problem with her for that. But I mean, if you handle her well, she's going to be a good character too. So I, I'm kind of curious yeah. to see what they do with her. Um, and then they're going to have a crack at Swamp Thing. They're going to do a movie on the real dark origins of the Swamp Thing, which I'm kind of a bit. I'm like, oh, well, and they tried that with that new TV series, like this dark gritty and it only lasted like six or seven episodes and they canned it. So yeah. is there really a movie audience for this? Like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I suppose it could be well done, but it, it's a, it, it's going to be a tough sell. It, it's going to be a tough sell after the show. Like you said, they, they already went that route and they didn't want to go the other route with the move, like the old movies with the, you know, yeah, yeah. the crazy comedy kind of yeah there, yeah they're a bit so. more slapstick and all that yeah yeah right right yeah so it's like i feel like they've tried it and they failed and yet they're like no let's have another go it's like really is it really and i don't know like for all we know james gunn's got something really awesome planned which is yeah but i don't know it's like is there gonna be an audience there you know like i was a bit a bit suspect on that one i'm like it seems yeah odd to I... pick him out of like You've got all these other ones you can start fresh with while you're trying to revamp Swamp Thing, you know? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of other characters they, they, they could do, um, especially that character because you know, he's he's so, you know, he's so local as far as what where he really excels. You know, you got to yep. kind of keep him in the, in the swamp for, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, he's very, he, he's, he's not like this traveling zoo. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. right. So, yeah. you know, his stories are going to have to be small, uh, probably low stakes compared to the rest. Yeah. And and just think, I mean, you're basically, you're talking about a talking, walking tree. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be a tough sell with him as the only character. So like Guardians well, of the he, Galaxy, yes, you had a talking raccoon, but it was a whole team. Yeah, he I was about to just, say, like, just him. Groot was a talking tree and he managed to make that work. So, okay. Right. I, true. Okay. True, rest my case. <laughs> with, with, with them though, it, like I said, it's a, it's a team effort, you know, you yeah, got all these an other personalities. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, just yeah. Groot or just, uh, yeah. just Rocket. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Um, then we've got Creature Commandos, which is an animated series, which is a version of the Suicide Squad, but with more supernatural type sort of uh okay i don't know that one but neither do i i've never heard of it before but that one's going to be an animated series um so we're still going to get some animated stuff um then there's a amanda waller spin-off which apparently is going to fit in between peacemaker season one and two so it's, it's going to be a tv series also tv series this okay. one says that it's um because apparently yeah, uh, apparently James Gunn doesn't have the time for Peacemaker, so it's going to slot in between Peacemaker Season 2. So that'll sort of space it out till then, which I'm busting for Peacemaker 2. I loved the first season. It was awesome. I loved it to death. It yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I, any, anybody who does watch my channel, you'll know that I'm uh, also an you know, aficionado and, and a promoter of, of black cinema. Yeah, But... That being said, I don't know that Amanda Waller needs a show. Yeah. Um, why not just keep her really in Peacemaker and let her work through that? I'm, I'm with you. She she can be that um, that that uh, conduit, as I was looking for, between shows. She's that, that link. That right. We can right. still have our separate stories, kind of like the Suicide Squad movies were. But right. you still had that link of Amanda Waller. She's the head. She's this, but they were still separate movies. They still did their own thing, but you still tied them together by that one character, right? Not necessarily have to make sure all this is in and all that's in, sort of thing. Like she, she she's be... great for that to link everything just by being that one character in those shows. Yeah, she could definitely be the the Nick Fury for DC. Yes. 
Um, exactly, exactly. And and then use it as a warning because the Nick Fury show was horrible. So, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> you better uh, buy beware. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know. yeah, and, and I'm like, yeah, like what, what, what we we get to see a daily life, like what we get to see a tragic backstory, like what I don't understand. Sure. Yeah, it, it seems only, like a weird choice. Yeah the the only thing I could really imagine them doing. You know, of course, they'll have some kind of tragic backstory, but the only thing is based on Peacemaker season one would be they'll probably go deeper in with her relationship with her daughter. And oh, yeah, very true, true. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't know if I need a whole show of that. Why couldn't that just be part of Peacemaker? That could be part of Peacemaker too. That could be like one of those uh, secondary arcs that right. you see them go through their relationship and how it got to where it was and all that type of stuff. Yeah, because like, she was clearly the second biggest character in the show. She was, you know, after that's right, after yeah. Peacemaker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. Third, because Vigilante was the second biggest character. As fair, far as fair. I'm concerned. Now, I'll say, you know what? You know what? I, I want a Vigilante I put, off. <laughs> I put it this way. I think she was the second, like, biggest character, but he was the most fun character. Yeah, yeah. He was the I one want I a Vigilante spinoff, and I want an Eagerly spinoff. <laughs> there i'd be happy just those two. <laughs> yeah. but there you go vigilante and eagerly spin off the two of them a buddy cop thing just <laughs> off doing that. that sounds nice i mean i mean take my money <laughs> yeah, that um nuts. <laughs> it does sound nuts to be awesome <laughs> um and the next one we got is lanterns now this one i'm actually this really piqued my interest like i'm a bit of a gl fan um, and this is going to center around Hal Jordan and John Stewart together, as opposed to we usually only get one, one of the you other, know, right? we either get a John Stewart or we usually get a Hal Jordan. Like it never seemed to have the pair of them together. Like I know it's happened in the comics, but as far as like on screen, we never see it. it, it to me, that scene, this is like a buddy cop film because it's apparently supposed to be like a detective mystery with, uh, the GLs being the super cops of. Earth okay okay so i was so, i was curious when you said together I, I didn't know if you meant them like really working together or like a batman beyond situation where where how jordan is an older guy and mentoring and oh that. and he's mentoring yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, i get you so, um no curious. what is they're supposed to be like um because the the premise of the gls is that they are the cops of the universe i suppose right. and this is like it's but it's always funny that for some odd reason, Earth seems to have like three or four GLs where other planets just get one. Like, you know, we've got, we've had hot, uh, so if I'm not mistaken, we've got Hal, John Stewart, Kyle Rayner, and Guy Gardner. So we got four. Like, mm. <laughs> how much trouble do we have on this planet that we need four? Like, everywhere else just gets one. <laughs> right. Right. So now this but, is a, a series, right? Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be a series. Like, I okay. like the idea of it. I really do. Yeah. I, like, for me, as a bit of a jail fan, I think, yeah, the idea of this, like these two buddy cops going out into space, solving this some mystery or whatever else, like it, uh, there's a real potential, like it, to have those two, and because they they're both clear. If you've ever read the comics or yeah, even the, just the the animated series, they're very different characters, yeah. you know, yeah. that I think would sort of have that nice opposing look on things, I suppose you could say. Yeah. And, and, um, and I think the, I think that lends itself definitely to a, a series rather than a movie. I don't know if I really definitely. want another Green Lantern movie, nah, but a nah, series nah, where you, where they get to explore, like I said, they're traveling around and you got all these other lanterns and all these other places that they can encounter and work with and yep. maybe fight if someone's a rogue or something like that. Yep. Um, I, I, that definitely lends itself to a, a TV series. But I, I think the the big problem with the with visual media, TV or movie, for for me, to me, for Green Lantern, let me know where you stand on this, is yep. with this ring being so powerful that it can do anything. It, it's kind of like it, it. You you can only come up with bad ideas to keep the story going. So, if, for instance, if I if if I'm a Lantern and I encounter a problem, I'm gonna automatically try to think of whatever it is to end that problem, like. Yeah. the first time with the ring whereas yeah. in the in the movies or the shows they don't necessarily do that it's like okay there's let me just use the lantern to catch a falling baby or let me just use the ring to i'll make a big hand to catch the falling baby or i'll, or I'll make a car and go fast some, somewhere or you know or yeah. i'll make a giant net to to catch the asteroid 
but I'm not necessarily going to think of the thing that's going to, you know, just obliterate the problem as the ring is, you know, whatever I think of, I can do. So I I think that kind of holds back. It's almost like the Superman issue where he's, where he's so powerful that it's sometimes it can easily make him boring. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like there's no problem he can't solve. So how is it that we have a movie where he has these challenges because he's near perfect. He couldn't, he doesn't really have any challenges. So I suppose that, yeah, I see where you're coming from. Like there is a real potential that there's, like if this thing is so powerful, how do you come up with something more powerful that means that he has to work to get to that, you know, defeat that solution sort of thing? Like, I suppose that, that I suppose that in law is the challenge, but I think I, I, I get that and I, I'll be interested to see where they go with it. But I, I don't know, for me, I'm in my head, I'm more focused on this whole buddy cop idea. And yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not that else, I don't yeah. want to see it or I'm, I'm discouraged from seeing it because of that. It's just something yeah. that kind of cr- crosses my mind every now and again whenever I think about the character. But I still watch yeah. the things and I still enjoy the thing. Well, except the Ryan Reynolds movie, but I do watch and enjoy, <laughs> you know, Green Lantern Fair. You, did, you didn't like that Green Lantern? What's my mind. <laughs> I thought, I thought everyone loved that movie. Uh, maybe it's just me. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, last couple, we've got Paradise Lost, which is a Wonder Woman prequel uh, in the style of Game of Thrones, focusing on the origins of Themyscira. Okay. Uh, that sounds different. really interesting. It is. It is interesting. I suppose it kind of gives you, it, it, and it says, was it, uh, We'll explore the more political game that is played on Themyscira and what society of women do in order to gain power. So, so if this is a, a prequel, are we saying Diana's still a child? Um, it doesn't say. It says before Diana's time. So it's almost like oh, maybe um, she's not there at all. Yeah, the she's origins, not there at all. Understand. Okay, which is a okay. It, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I don't think we've ever seen anything like this before. Uh, no, I no don't one's ever so. gone into the history of Themyscira before. Like, I'm so intrigued. I suppose that that is something different. I mean, yeah, I, be I'm intrigued. I'll be honest. Yeah. Out of everything I've heard so far, that's probably the most intriguing because it's something that I've I've never seen or before. So actually, that'll be like um uh, that TV show Krypton, the one that they did about uh, before yeah Kala before Krypton blew up, like that one. And yeah, they only went for a couple of seasons. I never got to watch it, but yeah, I had neither. But I, I know like what you're that. talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one I'm actually interested. This has really piqued my interest. Booster Gold TV series. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A series focusing on the future tech superhero with imposter syndrome in the works. Um, so Booster Gold's always that like overly sort of like almost like a peacemaker, that overly big personality who thinks he's the greatest hero ever, but he's actually really an imposter. Like he's like he's not that good he right. just, he's got tech it makes him better than he is but he's like yeah i, I don't know i think if, with the right type of actor i reckon that would be quite a funny sort of show i reckon if yeah I, I'm, more that I'm, I'm sounds like you know maybe kind of like a a get smart inspector gadget kind of thing you know exactly exactly yeah, yeah that bumbling idiot that fit like that solves it all or thinks yeah, they're the greatest yeah. detective in the world but bumbles their way through it sort of thing yeah like, uh, like a naked gun or something like that. yeah yeah naked gun, yeah 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 I, yeah i to see booster gold on on the screen would be fantastic I, I i definitely would watch that i reckon if they did a bit of a more of a comedy spin to it i think i think you'd have a really good show on your hands myself that's that's me personally but yeah but the like the original blue beetle like you i would kind of want that straight man in there though like uh-huh. Because you not like the blue beetle that just came out recently, the with the suit and whatever, but like the original costume, uh, of, I think they called him Blue Beetle One anyway. Um, it was more just a little bit, bit of a tech guy, and he was more the straight man to Booster Gold sort of, you know, okay. over the okay. top personality. So yeah, I pers- I would I would like to see that, but it looks like they're just doing, I guess, because they've already got that blue beetle, they're not sort of going to have two, shall we say. Yeah. yeah yeah and and not for nothing though i mean i mean again you could get back into tying things in but the the blue beetle that they just put out 
I, I actually, I thought it was a pretty good movie, but that character is kind of a straight man to all the comedy around him. Also, oh, right, yeah, because he's he's yeah, not. Well, it could work. Maybe the, maybe once they've done the show, they could get those two together, and you could get that you get that happening. I suppose. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, that's like to me that that piques my interest. That's the, that's pretty much the list of what they've got slated at the moment. So it definitely looks on paper, it looks good. Put it that way. Okay. Uh Joker 2, no mention. Um, I think that's part of like um it's kinda of like uh there's Batman two coming out as well, but they're part of what he likes okay. to call the Else World. The Else World, so okay. So like, he's not really yeah, counting he, those. Okay, got these it. These ones are all connected. This is gonna be the new D uh was it DCU, not D C E U like it used to be. So um but yeah, the Joker the Joker and um yeah, the Robertson Patton uh, Batman ones. They apparently float outside of the, the okay. actual universe. So, so yeah, they're they're still in the works. They're still happening. They're still going to come out, but they're not going to tie into any of this other stuff. Uh, as far as I'm, I can tell. So, which okay. is good. You have that choice of that, that something different. It's not going to be affected by the the wider story, I suppose, or universe, shall we say? Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm definitely going to have to wind it up. We're nearly hitting the two hour mark. <laughs> I just looked. Yeah, at the I, time. I just looked up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, oh Christ! Um, I was just going to probably just ask you one more thing. Are you are you excited for? Because we're only really going to get Deadpool Wolverine. Are you you peaked for that one? You you came? I, for that? I am. I, I'm. Uh, I'm so curious as to see to see what Disney really let him get away with with Deadpool, with this movie because i mean disney's you know they're the family entertainment company you know they're not doing well, this is isn't this supposed to be the first r-rated one too like yeah it's really gonna be an r-rated him... movie first one in the mcu um they're gonna let him spread his wings a little and do his yeah thing, so I, i'm really curious to see how far they let him go uh, and yeah, especially with hugh it. jackman back in the fold um and I'm curious, is is this going to be, you know, this huge, I'm, I'm sure this Wolverine is going to be a multiverse version of, of you know, of from what Wolverine, I, so. I think from what I've read, yeah, he's not the Wolverine that the, the Logan one that died in right, the Fox right. universe. This is the, hence because of the costume, he's more comic book accurate, whatever else. He's obviously, um, but the thing that I think from the trailer, I kind of get the sense it's this, um, because of the way he talks about certain things, like I'm going to be the Marvel Jesus and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. That it reminds me of, uh, I know this is going back to my comic book days reading the Punisher. There was like the Punisher kills the Marvel universe where he went through and kills everybody. I think Deadpool did a similar one too. If I'm not mistaken, someone will correct me, but I feel like this is going to be it where he goes through and cleans up the multiverse mm. because of you keep hearing about how there's so many cameos in this movie that I feel like the TVA has gone, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Can you clean it up for can, us? Can you You're the up. man for the job. <laughs> and to think about it like that, to me that sounds so interesting like mm. how do you work it how do you because it's all fourth wall breaking and this and that like he really is going to come in and just clean up this mess that they made with all the multiverses it's like you're the man to get it back on track like right right that's right. the impression i get i don't know like from yeah that yeah that makes sense and yeah. um, um I, I, that makes sense i i hadn't really thought of that angle so yeah, I'm definitely curious. I hope they do the go that way. That would be cool, and that would be a nice reset uh, for the, everybody. The cameos alone would be worth it. You have to admit, yeah. like just the amount of uh, jokes and this and that that you can pull in and um, guest spots and this and and to hopefully get Wolverine with him early on in the piece and have the pair of them buddy cop it through it, just the back and forth. It yeah, I think you, you literally got a blockbuster on your hands like if you, yeah and they uh, definitely at least i feel you would i mean yeah i, I, I think mean, they definitely gotta have a fight, fight scene early on when they meet too yeah yeah well i, I think from some leaked shots there is them get uh, busting it out but 
I yeah, I think they must sort of sort the differences out and then go through the rest. Well, you would hope so anyway. Like right. that was the whole point of getting them together for Christ's <laughs> sake, is so they could have screen time together. It's but I mean the movie's called Deadpool and Wolverine. It's not right. like Yeah, Deadpool three. So yeah. I know. I did, just from what I've seen, I feel like that is it. That is where they're heading with this whole Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe and just gets everything back on track. Yeah, that, and then that we go be, on the Fantastic Four and it's all good. <laughs> yeah, that that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, and I I know it had to be Hugh Jackman because of um, uh, because of all the jokes that Ryan Reynolds cracked in the first two Deadpool movies <laughs> about him. <laughs> but uh, what, what do you what do you think about possibly having someone else play that character? Oh, jeez. See, it's it. Oh God! Oh, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> it, you've got some massive shoes to fill. Like, it's funny that this guy has made this character so much his own. Yet he was a replacement. He yeah. wasn't meant to be this guy to to yeah. begin with. So it's funny how he took it over, and now it's become such an iconic role to him. It's it's like God. How do you f- fill that role? Um, I'm sure there's some other actors out there that we may not know about, some unknowns or whatever else that could do it. But as far as people, shit, I don't know. You see names get thrown around all the time and you're just like, eh. like I've seen, um, who was it? Um, damn. Uh, uh, what's his name? Clint Eastwood's son. I've seen his oh, name Scott thrown is, around. Uh, Scott Eastwood. I think his name is Scott. Scott. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard his name thrown around. Yeah, there's potential there. Um, t- down to um, stuff like Daniel Radcliffe and things like that. You're just like, oh, okay, I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the some of the bizarre things you see on Facebook, and you're just like, someone's having a fever dream thinking that guy can pull that <laughs> character off. <laughs> what about you? Do you do you in your mind? Do you think you have something? I, I really didn't have anybody in mind. But it, it, Logan was was so final to me. It was like, oh man, you know what? Yes, I'm okay with you bringing Wolverine back, but may, maybe it should be somebody else and let that that movie and that character ride off in the sunset. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I really didn't have any in, anyone in particular in mind, other than yeah. saying maybe someone shorter if we wanted to be more comic accurate. Comic book accurate, yeah. Tall. I want to be the same, yeah. I want someone of at least five foot, you know, they're like right. He's supposed to be short and angry and like, yeah, we we get some guys six foot one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He Jack was a pretty big guy. <laughs> um right now I'm getting the wind up from the uh the thing. We're only got a couple minutes left. So um, sure. Uh, do you have anything on your channel coming up soon that people can watch, mate? Or uh, just as far as um, superhero movies goes, I definitely am doing that video. So yes. it's um, I, I have some time off in a couple weeks. So in a couple weeks, I'll have that video up. Uh, other than that, uh, just have another episode of Movie Swap coming out in, next week uh, yep. on Tuesday night. I'll have I think it's Tuesday night. I have a young lady named CC Clemens. She's got a YouTube channel. Go follow her. Um, not much superhero stuff, but she's still a good YouTuber. Um, and I, I did recently do a all fictional football team, American football team, uh, made up of just movie characters. Uh, so if you know something about American football, it might help because I kind of go in depth into what they're going to do on the team. But it's oh, one right. of my favorite videos that I made. And of course, nobody watched it. So go watch it. Make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you, don't you hate that like yes it's the video you put the most work in that no one watches and the video you put the least work in becomes the hit that you just did not expect I, exactly i personally had those ones where i've just poured my soul into one video no one gives a shit and then there'll be one that i just do off the cuff and i get thousands of views <laughs> exactly exactly always <laughs> always so thanks for coming on, mate. I really appreciate it. I've had a blast. It was great to finally sit down and talk superhero movies with you. Um, um, was, I appreciate it was, you it was a blast. Thank, thank you. Because, yeah, talking superheroes for two hours is right up my alley. So we're cool. <laughs> so, yeah, go out, subscribe to Dell, go watch his channel. It's a great channel. I recommend it. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to do this again soon, mate. Definitely. 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 Right. Awesome. Thanks very much, and we'll see you later. 
Again, I would like to thank Dell for coming on the show. Look, mate, I really appreciate it. Had such a great chat talking about all things superhero cinema. And I look forward to catching up with him again soon after, say, Deadpool and Wolverine comes out at the cinemas and see if this movie is the one that can save the MCU. I certainly hope so. Hey, hey, so if you like this video, you want to see some more of my reviews, why don't you want to click that one there? Or maybe you want to see some of my collection updates. Got you covered too. Why don't you click that one there? And of course, don't forget to do the most important thing. Throw me a like, and don't forget to hit that subscription button on the way out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.